chapter 1. It's November in the humanity value. The sun has not peaked its warm embrace for years. Those living in this wistful up and coming town think nothing particular, nor the fact not a single soul has graced or moved to that area for years until now. The stranger heads up to the immaculately paved main street of Burundi Villa, a hills a long flowing dress set, an interview set at the group, psychiatric facility in the heart of the town where women, men and women and children veer in due to his ashened on his appearance regardless of his name. The Sergeant's town is well built and crafted, wooden milkman is spooled to four out in the graves. The buildings are our awnings come made of light oak, shade of woodways and stones, giving a friendly feel to the town at first glance. Everything's low, a pristine craftsmanship as it's set back in the 1800s. The barber shop high, school learning and high school learning main street exclusive with many stores, homes, spacious country and tall trees which almost reach to the heavens. A welcome addition decades ago because of the building, chilly rumours say it's haunted. No one dares to find out if really gossip or bored town folk or if it's some rumours bear any circumstance. Such schools, such things. The town laid out as what up and coming of it was a count of people who decided they would be there. The main possibility of the best, the poor feeling lingers. And no matter how lovely the town appears, or concerns consistence, maybe unseen, probably unlined beneath the troubling surface, shivering the woman continues up the slippery path road, leading towards a hill, passing on friendly spectators, wondering why the stunning blonde haired, green eyed woman, carrying a suitcase, wants to trek over the very facility, being void like a plague. Some think we should warn her and say, Turn back now, that's it all quiet. All the same it's country f- all the same as it's country with the citizens in human T Villa. I expect it me there's a chilly rain film pelting out into onto the woman. She scurries into a wooden walkway under the doorway into the nearest corner job, dragging her heavy suitcase behind her. Flight Flight the, the fog suddenly thickens across the streets, those standing around suspiciously glare at her, but then back again away, keeping a safe distance, smiling, he touches the pink lipstick of her full lips with a pinky finger. Hello, she says in her full welcome tone, sweeping the droplets of rain off her forehead. She's unaware the trail of mascara dripping down her cheek, uh, yet her kindness is then merely tossed aside like a shattered piece of glass by a window of silence. The puzzle puzzles the woman. She remains under shelter in the stall. She squeezes the water from her dress, her purple dress, and is sticking to each leg like a band aid, slinging her purse over her shoulder. She looks at the time. She now broken, now broken witch watch, witch watch. She realizes how she may be tardy to this end. No matter how the weather conditions are, she must be on time. Presently, with a deep breath, she sighs and heads back into the rain as the thunder claps and lightning flashes. Cooly fog purposely swells throughout the streets, obscuring the women's view. She glances around, searching, but cannot seem to spot the facility. She thinks of an excuse to explain her darkness. The truth is best. The rain continues beating down the cellar. Stranger telling chilling her and while she prays under her breath. Oddly enough, the rain suddenly subsides, eerie, an old man in red plaided skirt, hobbling with a wooden crane. Troubles along the barber's shop went panics when a young woman, Wally, smiles at him. In a kind, gentle tone, she asks, Excuse me, sir, do you know how to get off, get to the Hope Psychiatric Facility? I'm running a bit, and he stuns the old man who glares at a woman, wide-eyed and spit 
it voluntarily enters its establishment, the heavenly motions to what seems to be the only barber inside. Now he is an African American, a little skittish, especially to white folks. Her barber angry gets eyes in the cover through the plate glass window, steps outside his nice loafers, clad on the walkway. He sorts a crane and raises a ten inch shears on the curbside to the runner. You know you get out of here, lady. This town that, that, that stays to themselves and this man he uh, he hasn't done nothing for you. Nothing. We we welcome here. So get out of here. Out. All we want what he want is a dog on haircut. He bellows, storming back to the barber shop. He claims that the old man calls the old man down. The woman made clueless in the streets of Pharaoh's. A brown. A man gaping and the counter perplexes and fuses her. A sudden mouth blast for a small crowd of onlookers, mostly those who own businesses nearby. They eyeball one each other, grasping, whispering, just another troublemaker. It bewildered women not woman not knowing what to do or say, except a small, lingering children curiously watching. She rubs her arms, hoping she might not it's not far for the facility they should come wrong and chill. As the crowds quickly disperse, always a young little boy draws from his mother. He scamps off the walkway into the desolate street and gives a huge tug on the stranger's wet dress. He eyes eye the small children at the feet, who only points his tiny forefinger up the road, then dashes back to his mother's side, jerking his arm contractively. The mother stumbles off and abnormally staring at a tremendous sky. She squints her beautiful green eyes through the mist and glaze and lies on the almost facility up the road over a small hill, particularly, particularly a facility that maintains the appearance of a medium castle without proper security or to the parking lot. It is as if the facility overlooks the entire town itself, but down below. As she speeds up to pace her suitcase, filling things open, tossing her clothes and books across the wet road, half in she collects her belongings, squeezing at the water, thinking this is going to be a very long day. Very in her thoughts, she pots her suitcase close, close, close them, drags her body and drenched, drenched longings up the hill. The car slowly drives by, the driver abnormally eyes her. Woman smiles and waves of cooperation, her attention drawn back to the facility, sensing something which is terrible amiss, including gargoyles mercifully ingrained in the very stone. Why would, why anyone would place these on the outside of circuitry facility upon her? Oh Lord, this is where you instruct me to come. He takes a deep step. Let, let's go. Women's heads. Through the double doors of the building, confidence and preparation. The hair on her arms and its erect as static of trees near, and the lonely evil she's swift to pick up. It's is precisely when her skin senses an icy chill crawl over her forearms and skim scamper across her entire body like spiders. I apologize once again for my appearance. I found myself caught in a rage storm only the way here. A suitcase flung over and everywhere. Always, I'm terrible sorry. I need to find a hotel in town. I saw some suitable lodging, lodgings. The woman speaks to these exam explains to them. She interviews for the doctor position. Dr. Claire's Parkinson's office, a head of psychiatry. Wiping her wet cheek, she smears her mascara further and her eyes while attempting to make herself presentable once again. Oh, honey. Now don't you worry, the older woman remarks, opening her dress drawer. She rips up a handkerchief in the air, like a football fighter, and politely hands it to the young woman. Eccentric.